AT&T's $39 billion deal for T-Mobile USA raises some big questions, not least for the companies not involved. Carriers like Sprint, for example, which will, if this purchase is approved, go from third to an even more distant third in the U.S. market. This morning, we're taking a look at the wireless winners and losers in the wake of AT&T's big deal. Jennifer Fritchie is with us by phone from Chicago. She is one of the most accurate analysts on telecoms, making her a Bloomberg best. Uh, Jennifer, before we get into the winners and losers, I have this question for you. Does this deal prove that no carrier in the U.S. market can survive without the iPhone? Good question, Eric. No, I don't think that it proves that at all. I mean, if we look at what Sprint has done without the iPhone, they've done actually a success, you know, a slow but successful turnaround in the last three quarters. They went from really hemorrhaging subscribers to now being positive on a consolidated basis with both the CDMA and Biden and NASA. But T-Mobile is an example of a company that didn't have the iPhone and lost 400,000 customers last year, even though it has lower pricing than many of its competitors. I think T-Mobile was a, 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 um, an asset that was really very much in trouble once Sprint began to start taking the value of message away from them. If you look at T-Mobile's handsets as a standalone basis, they're pretty impressive, but I think their marketing message was so muddled in the marketing place, in the marketplace, the customers were really confused as to what their niche was. Let's talk about these winners and losers, and let's begin with Sprint. The stock was down almost 14% yesterday. You've been following this company for a long time. You've had an outperform rating on it for just about a year's time. Can Sprint really cover, uh, recover rather, enough of that lost value to justify a buy rating at this point? You know, I understand the emotion of it because much of the move in the month of March with Sprint has been related to its own speculation about a merger with T-Mobile. Now, first, that never would have been easy. I call it an al alphabet soup that would have been brought to the table. But secondly, if we do take, again, the emotion out of it and look at a company is being paid seven times multiple for a company like T-Mobile, which, again, was much more in distress than Sprint. I think that bodes well for Sprint. And then a third, I would point to the fact that in an overnight sweep, we've taken out Sprint's biggest competitor in T-Mobile, which will clearly be distracted for the next five, 15 months. Okay. Uh, absolutely cold heart analysis, free of emotion is what we need at a time like this. Let's talk about Clearwire. You were one of the many analysts yesterday to speculate that Sprint might need to do a deal with Clearwire, but that stock dropped more than 4%. Any idea why? Um, I think just the negativity around Sprint and feeling that Sprint is just dead in the water here would pull clear Clearwire down with it. I think the opposite. I think Sprint has to you know, get up and look at it with a, its own partnerships with a renewed sense of urgency, and I think Clearwire would be the top of that list. Uh, now, so does that make Clearwire, having dropped more than 4%, a screaming buy, in your opinion? Uh, yes, absolutely. Clearwire is one of our top picks. Um, as we look at what has stabilized Sprint recently, it has been the 4G message. And with that, that's what Clearwire brings to the table. In my view, they're very connected here. One, they both need each other very much in this environment. How about the other implicit judgments that the market is making? We're showing yesterday's stock performance for a bunch of the other wireless carriers. Leap Wireless up almost 16%. Would you concur with what the market is clearly saying? This is the next most likely takeover target? Um, I would say the prepay carriers, Leap and PCS, Metro PCS, are very interesting here. We prefer Metro PCS in terms of execution, but giving credit where credit is due, Leap, after the close, they announced very solid numbers for the first quarter. And prepay is really the growth opportunity of wireless right now. What is the scenario that investors are envisioning here? Just how might consolidation in the U.S. wireless industry go forward if it's not just Sprint and Clearwire? Uh, you know, who are going to be the players here? Who's going to be the consolidator? Is it just Sprint or might Verizon be involved? Um, I think it would be difficult. I mean, AT&T getting T-Mobile is not going to be an easy, t done, is not going to be an easy task. I don't think in talking to Verizon um, that they feel a need to make a move. Certainly anything can happen, but I think they've been happy with how it's taken out. I mean, fewer competitors is good for the industry, good for pricing trends, good for rationalization. Okay, Jennifer, thanks so much for joining us with... Winners and losers.